Hello and welcome to the first video for 2024. So today is the 2nd of February and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some pagan stuff and some Christian stuff that intertwine. I'd like to start by talking about in bulk. In bulk, in bulk, however you would like to pronounce it. There are different spellings and different ways to pronounce it. In bulk, as I pronounce it, is a pagan holiday celebrated from the 1st of February through to sundown on the 2nd of February. It's based on a Celtic tradition. In bulk means either use milk or in the belly. Um, no one knows for sure, but it could be either or, or it could be something completely different. And it's meant to mark the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. The holiday is celebrated by many Wiccans and other practitioners of neo-pagan or pagan influenced religions, particularly Celtic based faiths. Imolk is just one of several pre-Christian holidays highlighting some aspects of winter and sunlight and heralding the change of the seasons. And it is the first Sabbath on the pagan calendar after Yule. The celebration of Imolk dates back to pre-Christian era in the British Isles. The earliest mentions of Imolk in Irish literature were found in the 10th century. Poetry from the time relates a holiday to use milk with, it, with the implication of purification. It is speculated that this ritual stems from the breeding cycle of sheep and the beginning of lactation. The holiday was traditionally aligned with the first day of spring and the idea of rebirth. Imolk celebrations took the form of a festival in honour of the pagan goddess Bridget, or Breed, or Bridget, or Bride, many names, or variants of the same name, who invoked infertility blessings and oversaw poetry, crafts, and prophecy. Bridget was worshipped by the Philid a class of poets and historians among the Celts of ancient Ireland and Britain. Brigid was considered one of the most powerful Celtic gods, the daughter of the Dagda, the oldest god in the Celtic pantheon, Tuat de Dunun. Probably pronouncing that wrong? I apologise. She had two sisters, also named Brigid, although this is speculated that these sisters are meant to symbolise different aspects of the same god, a triple goddess. Myths about Bridget's birth say she was born with a flame from her head that reached to the sky and drank the milk of a mystical cow from the spirit world. Bridget is credited with the very first keening a traditional wailing for the dead practised at funerals by Irish and Scottish women. In pre-Christian times, Imolk observance began the night before February the 1st. Celebrants prepared for a visit from Bridget into their homes by crafting an effigy of the goddess from bundles of oats and rushes. The effigy was placed in a dress and put in a basket overnight. The day of Imolk was celebrated by rituals including burning lamps and lighting bonfires in tri tribute to Bridget. Over the centuries, Bridget or Bridget was adopted into Christianity as Saint Bridget, one of Ireland's three patron saints. The Catholic Church claims Saint Bridget was a historical person 
with accounts of her life written by monks dating back to the 8th century. Bridget, or Bridget, is a patron saint of Irish nuns, newborns, midwives, dairy maids and cattle. Whether or not she existed, these stories contain aspects in common with the detail of the pagan goddess and illustrate the transition from pagan to Christian worship. Like the goddess, Bridget, St Bridget is associated with milk and fire. Born in Ireland around 453 AD, St Bridget was the daughter of a slave and a chieftain and was raised by a druid. She was celebrated at an early age for her agricultural knowledge. With no interest in marrying, Bridget's goal was to create a monastery in Kildare, supposedly the former site of a shrine to the Celtic goddess of the same name. Bridget lived her entire life there. The legend of St Bridget and the Cloak is a story about the manner in which she came to acquire the land to build the monastery at Kildare. It is often regarded as one of the first miracles associated with her. According to the legend, she approached the king of Leonister, requesting the land on which to build her monastery. The place she selected in Kildare was ideal. It was near a lake where water was available, in a forest, where there was firewood and near fertile plain in which to grow crops. The king refused her request. Bridget was not put off by his refusal. Rather, she and her sisters prayed that the king's heart would soften. soften. She made a request again, but this time she asked, Give me as much land as my cloak will cover. Seeing her small cloak, he laughed and then granted this request. However, Bridget had instructed her four helpers each to take a corner of the cloak and walk in the opposite directions, north, south, east and west. As they did, the cloak began to grow and spread across many acres. She now had sufficient land on which to build a monastery. The king and his entire household were dismayed and amazed. They realised that this woman was truly blessed by God. The king became a patron of Bridget's monastery, assisting her with money, food and gifts. Later he converted to Christianity. It was on this land in Kildare that she built her dual monastery around 470. AD. She was renowned for her charity to the poor and stories are bound about her healing powers. Saint Bridget was a friend of Saint Patrick whose preaching set her on a course at an early age and she became Ireland's first nun. Saint Bridget is said to have died in 524 AD. The remains of her skull and hand are claimed to be in the possession of churches in Portugal. In the 12th century, legend holds that the nuns in Kildare attended to a fire built in St Bridget's honour. The fire had burned for 500 years and produced no ash, and only women were allowed in the proximity of the fire. The celebration of St Bridget's Day on February 1st was put in place by the church to replace in bulk on her feast day. An effigy of St Bridget of Kildare is traditionally washed in the ocean and surrounded by candles to dry and stalks of wheat are transformed into cross talismans known as Bridget crosses. Modern day in bulk is celebrated slightly low key. Sometimes a private affair concerned with connecting with nature the goddess Bridget is said central to the celebration for modern pagans, particularly those that are Wiccan or following the Celtic path. Groups that worship Bridget might include fire rituals on in bulk. 
Traditions from both the pagan celebration of Imbolc and the Christian celebration of St. Bridget can be found in modern Imbolc celebrations. Celebrants sometimes make a Bridget cross out of reeds as well as a Bridget corn doll or effigy. Now let's talk about another Christian festival held at this time of year, Candlemas. Candlemas is a Christian holiday celebrated on February the 2nd that has aspects in common with bulk. Its celebration be, can be traced to the 4th century Greece as a purification holiday and a celebration of the return of light after winter's darkness. Candles have traditionally been used in its observance. It's possible that Candlemas is a Christian adaption of the Roman holiday Februella, a purification and cleansing celebration. Candlemas is an ancient festival that marks the midpoint of winter, halfway between the shortest day and spring equinox, the same as in bulk. It's a traditional Christian festival that commemorates the ritual of purification of Mary 40 days after the birth of her son Jesus. On this day, Christians remember the presentation of Jesus Christ in the temple. 40 days after the birth of a Jewish boy, it was custom to take him to the temple in Jerusalem to be presented to God by his thankful parents. In pre-Christian times, the day was known as the Feast of Lights and celebrated the increased strength of the life-giving sun as winter gave way to spring. It's a day of the year when all candles that were used in the church during the coming year were brought into the church and a blessing was said over them. It was the festival day or mass of the candles. It's still celebrated to this day and people will bring their ch candles to church to have them blessed so they can use them throughout the rest of the year. But in a time before electric lights, candles were important. So people thought they gave protection against plague and illness and famine. For Christians they were, and still are, a reminder of something even more important. Before Jesus came to earth, it was as if everyone was in the dark. People often felt lost and lonely, afraid, as if they were on their own, with no one to help them. Then came Jesus with his message, that he is with his followers, always ready to help and comfort them. As if he is a guiding light to them in the darkness. Christians often talk of Jesus as the light of the world and candles are lit during church services to remind Christians of this. The Romans had a custom of lighting candles to scare away evil spirits in the winter. One of the most interesting custom, customs that took place in Scotland in the olden days, Candlemas was a day when children brought candles to school so that the classrooms could have light on dull days. As time went on, gas lighting took over from the candlelight the children took money to the teacher, who was supposed to spend it on sweets and cakes for the children to eat. The boy or girl taking in the most money was declared Candlemas King and Queen, and they ruled for six weeks. They had the power to make one whole afternoon a week a playtime, and they could let anyone they wished off punishment. Other names for Candlemas Day are the presentation of Christ in the temple and the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Both of these names come from the special events in the life of baby Jesus. People believed that Candlemas Day predicted the weather for the rest of the winter. Proverbs express the idea that a fine, bright, sunny Candlemas Day means there is no more winter to come, whereas a cloudy, wet, stormy Candlemas day means that the worst of winter is over. Proverbs such as, 
If candle must day be fair and bright, winter will have another fright. If candle must day brings cloud and rain, winter won't come again. And then you have the German proverb, the badger peeps out of his hole on candle must day. And if he finds snow, walks abroad. But if he sees the sun shining, he draws back into his hole. In America, the same story is told about the groundhog. And in the UK, we use it for the hedgehog. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of knowledge. And see how Christianity and paganism cross over. And how Christianity adopted some pagan beliefs in order to encourage the pagans to become part of their faith. Have a blessed Imbolc, Imbolc, Candlemas and Groundhog Day, whichever you are celebrating. Blessed be.